Another type of testing we can undertake in econometrics is the test of structural stability models, the so-called the Chow test. Before we proceed to the test, I would like to quickly explain what a structural change is. So it might happen that the values of the parameters of the model don't remain the same through the entire time period. And it might happen due to some external forces like financial crisis, for example, or some policy changes. So, and because of that, uh, we, it might happen that if we split the sample, we will get different parameters, completely different. So let's consider this test using an example. Suppose we've got some data on disposable personal income and personal savings for the United States for the period from 1970 till 1995. And we would like to check whether the 1982 recession so there was a recession in 1982 affected the economy variables in question. So we've got two variables, disposable income and personal savings. We've got the time period from 1970 till 1995. And we would like to check whether the recession of 1982 affected the economic variables in question. So uh, to be able to do that, first of all, we need to split the sample. So the time period from 1970 till 1981. So in this case, we'll have 12 observations. The second sample is the time period uh, for the time period from 1982 till 1995. So the second half of the um, of our overall time period. In this case, we've got 14 observations and we also have the third a sample, which is our entire sample from 1970 till 1995. So, so 12 plus, plus 14, this is 26, 26 observations. So in the next step, what we need to do is we need to estimate the first equation and obtain the residual sum of squares. So we estimate the first equation and save its residual sum of squares. Then we estimate the second equation and obtain its residual sum of squares. So we estimate this equation and we save its residual sum of squares. After this, we sum uh, the residual sum of squares from the first equation and the residual sum of squares from the second equation to obtain the so-called unrestricted residual sum of squares. After this, we estimate the third equation, so our mm, entire uh, sample, and obtain its residual sum of squares. And we can call this residual sum of squares as the restricted residual sum of squares. After we've done this, we can proceed to the, to the test itself. So the null hypothesis is that there is no structural break, and the alternative hypothesis is that there is a structural break. So if we say that there is no structural break, that means that this is the valid equation. So the third equation is the correct one. But if we accept the alternative hypothesis that there is a structural break, that means that this sample needs to be considered in separately. So the first part and then the second. To test this hypothesis, we use the F test. So we take the, the values from our previous findings like RSSR minus RSSUR, and we divide it by K, which is the number of parameters. And if we look at our example, we will see that there are two parameters, the intercept and the slope coefficient. Then in the denominator, we've got the residual sum of squares from the unrestricted model divided by N1 plus N2. So the number of observations from the first model plus the number of observations from the second model Instead of having this n1 plus n2, we can just have n, right? Because n1 plus n2 is equal to n. So this is the total number of observations. Minus 2k, so 2 multiplied by the number of parameters. And from this uh, part, we get that this test follows uh, F distribution. Uh, in the denominator, we've got k degrees of freedom, and in the denominator, we've got n1 plus n2 minus 2k degrees of freedom. So after we compute this f statistic, we compare it with the critical one. So and if the estimated f statistic is higher than the critical one, then we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one, meaning that there is a statistically significant structural break.